Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome along to another Ski Sunday. It's good to be back after having a week off last week, uh, which was uh, the first one, first week off I'd had actually since the start of the year. So it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was nice to do some other things, although I did miss it. And uh, yeah, it's really good to be back. Um, cool. All right, just before we start, I'm just going to stop uh these back up because i don't want that interfering um okay cool and i'm gonna stop the notifications as well if i can um cool hey moda happy sunday to you great to have you here uh and how great great to have everyone else here as well um so yeah i took a i took last week off for a couple of reasons um first of all i've been looking into the streaming setup and uh, how I can improve that because I'd have had a few crashes recently. Ah, Ezequiel. Thank you very much, Ezequiel. <laughs> it's good to know because I always get it wrong. Um, cool. So, yeah, and so I've been looking into the streaming setup, and I think, you know, the, the plan is um, well, there's two options either I get another computer or use, a, use an, a, an older computer to do the streaming. I did actually buy a capture card. Um, problem is, is my older laptop's really noisy, so uh, I was a bit worried about that just being too noisy. So um, I'm also I might wait, hold out until the new M1s come out, the M1 uh, MacBook Pros. I think they're they're due out in November because I have heard that that makes a massive difference um, to the CPU <laughs> and the capacity for streaming. Um, but it's still quite early days with with uh, I think the way that OBS and Streamlabs work. So um, anyway, what I've done for the moment is I've actually got a cooler uh, sitting underneath my laptop, and I th I'm I'm also kind of very much monitoring the CPU and the temperature. I think that's why my computer was crashing; it was just getting too hot. So I'm going to see how that goes today. Um, hopefully, we'll be okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, or the other reason that I uh, was not around last weekend is that I was filming some uh, footage for some videos because I'm really pleased to announce that my album is uh, now planned for release on the 25th of June. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's going to be released on all the digital platforms, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, Beatport, TrackSource, all those kind of places. Um, but I've also put it on to my Bandcamp page as well um, as a pre-order and um, I'm going to be releasing one track a week. So uh, the track Jam State, you might have heard that in the intro. Um, that's uh, that's available now um, and you get that if you pre-order. So, so this is sort of shameless plugging, I know. But um, but yeah, very excited to, to finally have this kind of out. And yeah, I'm working on the next video for the next track. Um, hey, thanks for the subscription. Really appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's really exciting actually, and um, I've been getting some really good reactions so far. So we'll see how it goes. It's still very early early days. Um, I'm gonna get probably get a promo company involved as well for it. So, but yeah, I've just realised well, like it's such a lot of work because it's my own label, and I haven't released anything on my label for a while, and the the landscape has changed even in the last sort of three or four years. You know, there's so much more you need to do. But it's all super exciting. Um, so yeah, cool. Right, so let's get rid of that. Um, and in fact, I'm going to quit Chrome just so I can conserve as much CPU as possible. Um, so what are we looking at today? We're looking at this uh, classic track uh, by Lil Louie called French Kiss. Came out in 1989. Um, it's, a, it's a track that I wanted to do for a long time. Uh, it's not. It's not especially complicated. Certainly not harmonically. Um, but it's a great track, and I think it's a, it's really interesting the way that all the kind of the you know the the polyrhythms and you know it's a really good example probably of how a great way to use push and uh, and and Ableton Live you know by creating these clips and you know working on a little kind of performance. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, so uh, let's make a start. I've got the track here, um, and let's just turn it up a little bit. So this is the audio file, and I've got this synced up as well. So if I just double click on this, um, I've gone through and um, I've just put in some warp markers 
uh, just to make it kind of sync up. Now, the the well known thing about this track is it actually slows up and then um, slows down and then speeds back up again. Um, so the main bulk of the track is at 124 BPM. So I'm just going to turn this. Uh, I've got this limiter on here. I'm just going to turn that down a little bit. I don't want to distort. Okay, so I've got that synced up nicely. Um, but then when we get to this part of the track. You can hear that it really slows down. Um, and then, um, <coughs> yeah, it's kind of speeds right back up again. So um, I'm not going to be recreating the erotic moaning in this track. Um, and I'll, likewise, I haven't extracted it as an acapella either. I thought um, I just not something I really need to do, not on a Sunday anyway, not a Sunday afternoon. Um, uh, but yeah, maybe save that for another time. So yeah, I think what we do make a start in is, is just kind of go through this um, and just identify the different sections. Um, so this is from the start. I'm just going to flick through until it changes. Okay, so. So basically the high, the high string comes out there. So you've got the high string there and it comes out. Right. We've got that kind of red. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Because that really sounds like Blue Monday. Kind of shake her in. It's like a cowbell as well, I think. Yeah. Okay. Stays on that. Ah. Okay. Then we've got this kind of little brass, synth brass riff coming in. got this kind of arpeggio riff that comes in. And that's interesting there because it kind of turns around. So slightly changes there so we can we'll, we'll try, we'll try and reflect that. <laughs> My daughter. Yes you do. Classic. My daughter asking if she's got permission to go to the car park. I think we I think we'll we can we can have that riff, that snare riff. Kind of on a clip maybe and we can just we can just launch that coming in. So, so I'm just seeing if there's any difference between this. Alright, 
if stuff comes out, I'm not really going to worry too much about it. I think we've got the main things now. Now this is a this is an important thing. So this transposes down a tone. And then back up again. And then the string comes in. Cool. I think we've got I think we've got most of um most of what we need now. So um, I think what we can do is we can just we can just kind of grab some sections of it. Um, so let's just grab this, maybe the. Uh, I'm just going to loop it. I just did a command L there, and I'm going to use my favourite function: consolidate times a new scene. There we go. Um, not sure why that's taking so long. Doesn't normally take that long. That's interesting. Maybe it's the CPU. It normally it's normally based on the loop. So if I just open it now. Okay, no, it looks like it's done it and it's looped it. Let's just double check. Let's give ourselves a bit of space. Yeah. Okay, cool, that's fine. Um, so let's just go back and keep doing this for the different sections. Um, we might as well do that one as well. I've actually got a key, key command set up for this, uh, which is Shift Command N. There we go. So let's just race through these now. Um, I'm just looping and then consolidating. Hey, thanks for the follow, David. Much appreciated. Um, let's just go to this one. Cool. It's going to take a little bit longer, that one, isn't it? Um, the advantage of this is of consolidating uh, to new scene, consolidate time to new scene, is it just loops it up for you and it kind of crops it as well. So it just, it just makes a really nice kind of clean, um, clean transfer, if you know what I mean. Um, cool. So let's just do this again. Uh, for some reason my key commands have stopped working. Why is that, I wonder? Okay, let's go through this. It takes a little time, this, isn't it? Oh, there we go. Phew, they're back. Always a bit disconcerting when the, uh, the key commands start failing. All right, and we could, we'll just we'll just head over to session view just to double check that they're all going in. Yep, they're all going in consecutively, which is nice. Uh, loop. This one's going to be a quick one. And loop. Go. Okay, there's a few more to go. Um, it's normally quicker than this, but it uh, could be something to do with the CPU. Okay, nearly there. Although this is a slightly, slightly um, tedious process, it does mean that um, things are kind of nicely organized in session view uh, afterwards. So let's just do this and then... <laughs> Nearly there. I'm going to start needing a fan in this studio soon. It's, uh, the weather's hotting up. Okay, so there we go. We've got the transposing section, and I think that's probably it. Actually, that's yeah, that's going to be enough. Cool. So we've we're now back over here. Uh, in session view. Um, hey, Snowy. Fantastic. Oh, really great. Um, yeah, well, I mean, this is something I've been doing since the start of the year. Every Sunday, it's the Ski Sunday. Had a week off last week, but I'm back now. So, yeah, great to have you on board. Um, cool. So, 
Let's just um, see now. So we, this you can see here on push, it's reflected. So I can just trigger these. Cool. So we got we got a nice kind of reference point. So what I'm going to do is I could I could kind of name these, but um, I think we should just we should just sort of crack on, um, and I, I'll just sort of use my ears as a reference point uh, to hear what's going on. Cool, so the first thing, first clip. I think we'll I think we'll start off uh, with with the actual riff. So I'm gonna create a new track. And this is a special sound. It's a, it's a very well known sound. Uh, it's the solid bass sound, or sometimes known as the lately bass sound. Um, I think it was Whew. Um, so the I think the solid solid bass was a preset on the DX100 Yamaha DX100, and the lately bass was the same basically the same patch but on the rack version of the DX7, which is the TX81Z. I think that's right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up um, a the Archeria DX7, um, and. I'm pretty sure that on there there's there is a version of lately bass. So I'm going to bring it up now. There we go. Oh, the classic. Sorry, I'm playing another different keyboard. Let's play this keyboard. Cool. So let's find the sound. Um, what we could do actually is that we could do a little search, couldn't we? There we go. The legendary bass. Cool. So um, let's just go back here to the DX7. Right, I'm just going to lose that for the moment. And I'm actually just going to bring up uh, the VMPK, uh, which will, it's, it's very big, isn't it, at the moment? Let's make that a bit smaller. Unnecessarily big. <laughs> cool, because what this will allow us to do is to uh, just see what, what notes are playing here. Okay, so the first problem there. So anyway, well, first of all, it's an F. All right, so we know it's an F. That's great. Um, however, the first problem here is uh, that this sound is monophonic. Uh, so we want to put, want to make it polyphonic. Okay. Um, let's turn it down a bit. Now I'm pretty sure it's just that. So this is like an open fifth, basically. That's the one. It's going to be. It's, it, it will be in F minor, I imagine. But it's playing fifths, which makes it kind of nice and ambiguous. Good for kind of, you know, techno music. That is. I was thinking maybe it might have. Might have. If that have. Might have that note in it. It's going to turn up a bit. So it's just going to be that. So um, let's just mute that for the moment. Let's turn the metronome on. Uh, let's quantize on as well. And what we could do actually is um, we could we could actually play this in on push, couldn't we? So if I get the scale F minor, I've already done that actually. So you can see. I don't know if you can see on there, but there's there's purple. Let me just turn that, turn the light off. There we go. So the purple um, pads indicate the F. We've got uh, we're in F minor, so that's the tonic. Um, cool. So if I put the accent on now, that's making it 127 uh, full kind of velocity. Um, which is a bit much, so it might be quite good to just use the velocity plugin here um, and just limit. Cool. 
So let's just. Let's record it in. Cool, that's nice. So let's just, I'm just going to adjust the lengths of those. Compare it. It probably does vary a little bit, but um, I think that'll do, that'll do for the moment. Um, okay, so let's look at the drums now. Um, I'm gonna, I'm pretty sure that this is an 808. Um, so I think we'll start off with an 808. I'm just gonna save this as well. Yeah, we'll start off with an 808 and then, and then we'll sort of see how we get on. It may need a, a bigger kick. Uh, so let's just get the core kit in there. That's nice. Uh, so let's, yeah, let's just change the decay. Actually, what I might do is just increase the zoom on this because I'm at 100. So let's make it a little bit bigger. That might be, might make it easier to see what's going on. There you go. All right, so got the accent on. Got quantize on. All right, obviously very standard four on the floor, but let's put it in anyway. Okay, so nothing too difficult at the moment. Um, I'm just bringing something up on my iPad. Hold on a sec. There we go. All right, so the next thing is going to be looking at the hi hat pattern, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's just listen to it. <laughs> So this is one of these things where it's the choke, uh, there's a choke group set up on here on the hi-hats so that the open hi-hat is being cut by the short hat. Um, so yeah, that was a, that would have been a function that was going to built into the TR-808. Um, first of all, I always find with these uh, core kits that the hats are too loud and the kick's never loud enough. Maybe that's just my preference. <laughs> uh, let's put it down there for the moment. Um, so yeah, so let's just uh, just go back to the kick. I'm just gonna mute the kick actually for the moment, just so that we can concentrate. Um, now I'm gonna use, I'm actually gonna use push. Uh, it's a great pattern, I know, I love it, David. So what's going to really help me here is if I just slow the track down. So I'm going to put it down to... Now, as this is, this is really useful, because if I just focus on, on the open hi-hat, I can, if I slow it down even more, I can kind of see, if I, if I use the step sequencer, where the hats are falling. So I think it's there there and there. Yeah, that sounds right. And obviously the decay is lasting quite a long time, but that's going to be cut. Oh, this one there. This one there. So we can do the same thing now with the closed hat. So I think it's kind of going in the gaps, basically. If I put... I'm trying to use my ears to... There we go. So let's, so 
turn it back up again. Okay, so obviously that kick is way too quiet. Laying down the track as well, aren't we, for the for later on? Okay, so already I think that the closed hat can come up a bit. So we'll leave it. We'll leave it maybe with this with the 808 for the moment. Um, but what we could do is just do a bit of a sort of initial processing on this. Uh, so let's get the old classic. Um, doesn't feel old actually, still the drum bus. Whoa, let's increase the transients a bit. I'm just kind of taking off the damp, but leaving on the drive. Let's just compare it to this. That's good. She sounds a little bit fatter, <laughs> which is quite nice. Um, what would be good is uh, to maybe add some tape effect to this, um, kind of get the Ampex uh, ATR 102 involved, um, just to just to kind of give it some warmth. So that's already kind of distorting it. So let's just take the output of the drum bus down a little bit. And let's uh, let's look at some, some of the presets here to see if we can find something uh, that's cool. Um, so we've got like old school sound. Let's try that. That's so nice. Takes off some of the top end. Let's put a bit of that back. It's colouring the sound a bit too much, I think. Uh, Let's just have something that's maybe just kind of giving it more of the kind of warmth. Um, so we could just put like kind of 15 IPS. That's nicer. There we go. All right, so let's see what else we've got here. Um, we've got this nice kind of string single note pedal. Um, I'm imagining that they probably would have had a Roland uh, keyboard, a Juno 60 or something like that. So I'm going to go for my ultra favorite low CPU um, plugin, uh, which is the Tal Uno LX. Uh, if you've watched this before, you know that I love it. Okay. Let's bring up the uh, the MPK. All right, so let's go for a uh, a string, shall we? Let's go for. both both of the choruses on give it a kind of wobbly effect uh, so let's just figure out what note it is oh, I'm confused that's actually my version um. So it's 
just playing an F. Now. Cool. So let's just play that in now over my version. Let's record it in. Down a little bit. Okay. I don't think there's anything else happening. So I'm going to leave it there. What I am going to do is I'm going to tart the sound up a little bit and uh, I'm just going to put some reverb on this main riff. Um, I've actually got an uh, EMT 140 here. Just a little bit, give it a bit of width. I'm just going to tweak this bit. Let's just uh, take a little bit of the K off the kick. I can actually give it a bit of drive, uh, even on that kick, which is really nice. Right, time to save. A little sip of tea, cold tea. Hope everyone's all right. Have a good Saturday, Sunday even. <laughs> it's not Saturday, it's Sunday. Um, cool, so let's look at the next pattern. Uh, let's go back over here. And we can start kind of building this up now. Um, right, let's just unmute it. Okay, so that's exactly the same. Nothing else new going on. So let's just duplicate these parts down. And let's go to the next one. Oh, actually, you know what? I can take the, uh, I don't need that string there, do I? So I don't need that because it came out. So now we've got the, the Blue Monday riff. So let's copy down the core, the kit, and the riff. Um, but let's just mute them for the moment. And we're going to need another sound. So. I'm pretty sure that the Blue Monday drum machine was a was the DMX. Okay, so let's uh, let's give that a go at least. Uh, so Here we go. Tune it up a little bit. Um, okay, I won't, I won't get into uh, EQing at the moment, but let's just get the pattern in first. So let's take that out, put this back in. Let's try and play it in. Ah. <laughs> oh dear, my playing chops aren't, aren't good anymore. Uh, there we go. Let's just, uh, I 
could have actually just doubled it, but let's just copy it in. I'm being lazy. There we go. <laughs> I could copy that with the with the clap actually. Not sure if it actually does that, but let's just do it anyway and then just turn it right down. Now There was this, there was that um, kind of tambourine in there, wasn't there as well? Um, so let's do what I did last time and just mute the snare and the hand clap. And let's just play the original again. So it's there. Turn up, uh, tune up a little bit. Nice, and let's unmute the snare and the hand clap. Um, let's turn down that tambourine. Now, Time for a bit of EQ, I think, on this snare. Uh, just want to dial in a bit of uh, top end into that. Now this, as well, that's not a particularly nice sound, so I'm going to put some EQ on that. It's just going to take off a whole bunch of bottom end. And also what I'm going to do to make <coughs> this sound a bit nicer is I'm going to put some reverb on it. So uh, let's just use, uh, oh actually, this looks like there's some reverb already, so let's... Maybe we can just use that. Thanks for the follow, Iceman. Really appreciate that. does sound like it's a different kind of snare, but I'm not going to get too uh, hung up in it for the moment because it sounds all right to me. Okay, so there's the riff. Now, it, it could be that we can just uh, actually have that so that it's not a loop. Uh, it's just a four bar clip. And then I can literally just, so we could just be kind of playing that scene before. So it, it literally just kind of comes in whenever we want it to. And it will just stop anyway. Which is nice. Uh, cool. So let's, uh, let's move on to the next clip now. Okay, so what we've got now is uh, we've got a kind of cowbell and uh, some sort of shaker 
happening. So I'm going to duplicate those down there. Let's mute those for the moment. So let's see if we can use uh, these DMX sounds. It could be, um, we could try maybe the 707. In fact, maybe the snare was the 707. There we go. Let's see. Let's see what we've got in here. It could solve all our problems. It is. And there we go, we've got the cowbell as well. And So let me just double check it is. Uh... It sounds more like it, doesn't it? There we go. So let's just probably get rid of the DMX, uh, although I'm not sure if it had a shaker we could probably use but maybe not um okay in fact let's just copy it for the moment i don't want to get rid of that just in case um, let's just get rid of that and okay so it's got it's got that tambourine as well Ooh, let's just put the monitor on and then the snare That's better, isn't it? Always elusive, trying to choose the right drum machine. Um, turn the loop back on for the moment. Okay, much happy with that now. Um, let's get rid of that pattern. And let's just save this as well. Um, so I'm just gonna go back to the DMX and just... Okay, so let's, in that case, because we need a shaker and thinking that they might have had these drum machines at the time, uh, let's get the 727 going and hopefully there'll be a shaker in there. There we go. That's what we want. Right, so let's go back uh, to... Let's mute these again. Pete on for this. Okay. Nice. Now I'm going to give um, this. Uh, a bit of feel with the velocity. I'm just going to bring down the velocity of every other. There we go. And we've also got this cowbell to take repeat off.
not great. Uh, and I'm sure we have some better ones than that. Um, probably do it's going to just sit in the background anyway it's not even a major part of the pattern draw it in okay Okay, so let's just see where we're where we're at so far. Uh, we, I'm just going to go back to this clip and take the loop off, um, and I'm also going to just take these out for the moment, just to remind myself. So. Alright, so uh, let's just check because it sounds to me like. Okay. So there's still no kick. Um, let's go to the next uh, pattern. Okay, duplicate this down. So this is where we've got this kind of brass sound that comes in. Um, so yeah, let's see what we can use for this. Um, might be nice to try, maybe try the Ableton analog. See if there's something we can use for that. So I'm just giving myself a bit more space here. Uh, All right, so let's go to sounds, let's go to brass. Um, ooh, Kavinsky brass synth, synth brass. That could maybe work. sound like it's I'll, I'll keep that in the in there it sounds like it's an actual sample uh, probably some sort of cheapish sample uh, let's just keep that there and just carry on with the search Ooh, see that could work 80s To this one. I think we'll stick with that one. It's fine for the moment. I think. Uh, right, so what's the what is the pattern?
Let's just turn the level up a little bit. Just bring up my keyboard so you can see what I'm playing. I'm going to record it in and uh, then we can maybe play around with the sound. It sounds to me like it's got some sort of uh, delay on it as well. So let's uh, get the echo device going on. Attempting to use the ping pong. with that. <sighs> Let's keep pressing on. What else have we got? Uh, the next pattern. Okay. So we've got everything else. I mean, all the, all the stuff that was there, plus we've got uh, a clap and a snare. So can we use the 707 for that? Uh, maybe we can. I think we certainly can. some reverb on that clap. Now there is there is some set up on this group. That's quite nice. There's a lot of bottom end on that snare, which to me is kind of getting in the way. Right, nice, let's move on. Okay, so it sounds to me like uh, we've got all that stuff plus the kick comes out, uh, so. So we can go into this 808 pattern. 
uh, kick drum, press zero. And we've got the start of that arpeggio. So I'm going to, I think, just stick with stick with this um, uh, because we can just we can kind of jam that in ourselves. So I'm just going to mute those, and I'm actually I won't mute that just yet. Uh, let's just use this to just to figure out what that pattern is. Uh, I'm going to go back to the towel for this. Solo that, oh it is soloed, sorry, solo that as well. Um, and let's, let's just see if we can program this from scratch ourselves. keyboard okay let's put that in to play. <laughs> uh, all right, let's, we'll come back to the sound in a minute. Let's just, uh, oops, hide that, uh, see if we can get a good one. Oh, there we go. Let's go back to the towel. Right, so let's uh, just see how it sounds now. Oh, I think there's there's uh, an echo as well on this. So let's just use the same one. Let's just copy that. I probably could just put it on the return, actually. So let's put it onto this pattern here, this scene here, sorry, and then just... Uh... Uh, 
Uh, nice. Um, now let's listen to, let's just save this. And let's just go to here now. <laughs> Everything back in. So I'm going to mute that. Uh, let's go for a Okay, so this is all the same. Um, actually, no, sorry, I know what it isn't. It isn't. So I'm going to copy this down here. And the reason it's different, I'm just going to color that a different color, is because the kick comes back in. There we go, let's just check that's all right. You know what, it's a little bit, it's, it's a little bit brassier, I think, than I've got it. Okay, so it it's the pattern changes here. Let's mute everything. Bring up the filter a bit more. Cool, let's bring all this stuff back in. Okay, um, we're nearly there now. Let's just have a look at this. Uh... Okay. So that's fine. Then it goes down. All right, and then the last one is it's basically everything that we have at the start, but it goes down a tone. So What's happening with the strings there? Oh, strings say the same, that's nice. Uh, cool, so let's just... Um... Let's just go here and let's just... All right, uh, let's just do a little bit of looking at the drums here. Let's 
still feel we need a bit more kick. Um, could try the boom. Okay, let's put the that into a group um, because when we play through this it might be quite good fun to just set up a couple of macros. Uh, filter cutoff is there. Uh, there we go. Let's just oops map that to one. There we go. That's a little bit overpowering, isn't it? Uh, let's just take that boom off a bit. Take the strings down a bit. Just doing a very rough mix here. And we can get rid of the core kit. Um, and I think most importantly, we should try what it sounds like slowing it down. do is take this snare and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to group the drums, group the tracks, sorry yeah the drums there and then where I've got this processing the drum bus I'm going to drag that over the group this time name that drums. Now that initially shouldn't make any difference but now if we take the 707 and drag that inside that group it makes it louder but it's kind of gelling it better I think. So I'm going to just delete some of these scenes that haven't got anything in now and let's play through the track. Nice. <laughs> Thanks David. <laughs> this is good fun isn't it? Um, okay so I'm going to play through this now. I'm going to be messing around a little bit, uh, improvising. Um, let's just name this um, now let's let's call it arpeggio so i know i'm on the right track 
Uh, we don't need this anymore. Well, actually, might might be useful as a reference. Uh, we've got session coming in there. Um, and then just to remind myself of where the riff is, it's there, isn't it? Yeah. And did I put that as a loop? No, I didn't. Okay, so turn it up. Let's uh, let's have a play of French Kiss by Lil Louis, uh, reprogrammed in Live Eleven. <laughs> that snare a little bit it's, it's a little bit intense isn't it? but is it yeah maybe let's just bring it down in the clip can come up a little bit. It's just now we've got that coming through the group. Okay, that's better. Okay, let's go again. Here we go.
Cool. Um, that worked out quite well. So, um, thanks everyone for watching. Um, that was really good fun, and uh, yeah, just it's it's just really interesting, you know, from what for me what what seems like a uh, kind of pretty simple track. There's actually a lot a lot going on, um, and yeah, the beauty is is in its minimalism, um, and the fact that you know. There, it was so original and groundbreaking, especially with this kind of slowing down and speeding back up again. Um, cool. Thanks a lot, everyone, for watching. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I will put this project up on the Discord um, server um, for all the subs, the subbers, um, so you can check it out. I will do that uh, this evening. Um, and yeah, Moda, I, <laughs> I always feel guilty if you change your plans, but um, thanks so much. Uh, for that and um, I will catch you next week um, for another one um, and yeah thanks everyone enjoy the rest of your Sunday um, get out in the sun if it's still sunny um, and I will check you very soon